Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today I'm gonna do my last painting of 2016. This is a super simple painting that even the absolute beginner can do. As you can tell by my face, my shirt, my arms, you're gonna wanna be in a place where you are okay covering everything in paint because we're gonna do some splattering. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials and let's get started. So let's start out by laying down our ground and I'm gonna take my one inch flat brush, wet it in my jar really good and wipe off a good amount of the water on the edge. Because I'm gonna be using matte medium to help me blend, I don't need quite as much water. Now make this background as scattered as you want or as smooth as you want. I'm gonna go for a little bit in between. So I'm loading up my brush right now with matte medium. And then I'm gonna pick up some Diox purple and you can use any colors you want here since this is a party that we're painting, your party can have any colors you want in it. And then I'm just gonna get a little corner of white because I don't want it to be too dark here at the bottom. And just start streaking it in. I'm using the matte medium so that I can get a smoother blend when I want to. If you don't have matte medium, you don't have to use it in this. I'm just really loving the the smoothness that the medium gives to the paint. So I like to use it. More medium, more purple, and a little bit more white. And I'm not terribly worried about the colors blending in perfectly. And if I decide that that's too dark, I can just grab a little bit more white and work that, work that into it. There we go, I like that better. Now as I keep moving up the canvas, I'm gonna pick up less and less purple. I still have quite a bit of purple on my brush, so I don't think I'm gonna grab any more actually. I'm just gonna grab some white. And I'm just gonna get a little lighter as we go up. See, I'm just picking up white. I've only picked up white since about right here, but because there's so much purple on my brush, I'm still getting that. If I were to put a good amount of pressure on my brush right now, I would get a big spot of a dark purple. So I'm just using kind of light pressure, just almost streaking the paint on. All right, let's make it look like there's confetti in the background. So I'm gonna take my cloud brush. It really doesn't matter what kind of brush you use here, just whatever you're comfortable flicking with. I'm just kind of shaking out the drips. I want a good amount of water in here, but I don't wanna lose control of it. I'm gonna start with some primary blue. Just bring out a bit and mix it with water. I don't want it to really be too runny, not like that. So I'm just gonna mix paint in with it until it's a little more fluid than it normally would be, but not quite runny. When you're flicking, the heavier the paint is, the more of a splatter you get. The thinner the paint is, the more of a spray type effect you get. So if you're going for stars, you want a thinner paint. If you're going for kind of a confetti splatter type thing like we're doing here, you want your paint to be just a little bit thicker. And cover up anything you don't want completely covered in splatters. And I'm just gonna start flicking. I want it mostly kind of up in this area. And it's getting all over me. If you angle your brush down like that, you get more of the, this type of thing. If you hold it straight up like that, you're gonna get more of the polka dot kind of spray. So with this kind of experiment and try it different ways, All right, same thing with the red. And the yellow. All right, so I dried this background and now we're just gonna add a few 
little streamer type things. So I have this little filbert that I've wet in the jar. And I'm gonna get some matte medium. And again, this is just because I feel like it helps me make the paint flow a little bit better. So I'm gonna mix it in with some blue here. And I'm gonna start using the edge. I'm just gonna make some little curly cues here and there. And I can just kind of let it trail off or give it an end. Whatever, just a few little random ones here and there. Cleaned off my brush and let's do a few red ones. For the yellow ones, I'm gonna mix a bit of white in there just so it stands out a little bit more because yellow is so transparent. All right, let's start drawing our champagne flutes and hopefully you can see this. I'm using a black watercolor pencil, but use whatever you have. So I'm gonna start with kind of an oval shape and these are gonna be quite abstract and they don't have to be symmetrical, they don't have to be straight. We're gonna make them really curvy and kind of fun. So I'm gonna start with an oval shape and because this pencil will come off with a little bit of water, you can kind of sketch it for a while until you get just the shape that you want. And I've got this one kind of off to the side a little bit. So about like that. And then I'm gonna draw a line from the center of it, kind of curved and down. And that just tells me how my glass is gonna be shaped. And I'm gonna come from the edge of the glass here, right at the edge of the oval, and kind of bring it down until it meets the center line. And same over here, a little bit of a curved shape, about like that. And then I'm just gonna draw a little bit of an arced line right at the bottom, and I'm sure you can't see that. I'll do this part in chalk, because you'll be able to see it here. So just a line about like that. Let's do a couple more. I'm gonna do another one up here, maybe a little bit bigger and definitely taller. And the line from the center of it down, and from the edge, kind of curved down to the stem. and a little line at the bottom. Do another one over here. I'm gonna have it angled the other way. and then our bottle. So I'm gonna do the bottle kind of similar. I'm gonna come up a little bit higher and I'm gonna do a smaller oval than what I did on the glasses. And I'm gonna bring the line kind of down and maybe back over. So it's kind of super curvy. Now I'm gonna come from the edge here, not all the way to that center line and out. And another one here, down, around for the bottle. And kind of flat on the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. It can be a little bit curved. And my bottle is moving off of the canvas. So only a little more than half of it is actually still on the canvas. There's the bottom of it, just in case you can't see the black pencil. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is come into here and draw a shape very similar to what I have at the top here for the top of the champagne. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but you want the basic shape. So it's gonna curve up at the top and down at the bottom. And because we're still gonna paint in all of this, 
you can make adjustments once we start painting. And I'm just gonna do that in all of these. Even a little bit here in the champagne bottle. I don't like that one. I'm gonna bring it down here more and angle it a little more. Let's start filling in our wine glasses and I'm gonna use an angle brush and I've got some yellow oxide or yellow ochre and I'm gonna use it kind of thick just so we can cover up this background. I'm just gonna paint these in solid for now. We'll come back and do some highlighting and stuff on them in a little bit. Don't worry about the surface of the champagne just yet. We'll do that in a slightly different color. My black watercolor pencil is showing through a little bit, so I do recommend using something aside from that. Like I said, I just used that so that you could see a little bit better. You don't have to worry about the edges being too terribly crisp because we're going to give these a heavy graphic outline in black afterwards. It's okay if you can see a little bit of your background through your champagne because champagne's kind of transparent anyway, so you might be able to see what's going on in the background there a bit. I almost forgot I wanted to put a label on the bottle, so I'll just do that with the paint here. I'm just gonna make kind of a, just kind of a crazy shaped label. And then I'm gonna fill in the bottle with this yellow color again. Now on the tops of the champagne here, I'm gonna take this little bit of gold that's left on my brush and I'm gonna mix a bit of white into it. Just get a lighter color. I think I'm actually gonna grab some of this cad yellow and mix it in there too. And then we'll just fill in this shape here. And we'll do that on all of these surfaces. Now let's start doing some highlighting and make this champagne really interesting. So I still have this color on my brush that I used on the surface and I'm not gonna wash that off. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this cad yellow and mix it in here, get a nice bright color and maybe add a little bit more white in there because up at the top I do want a pretty light surface quite a pale color now the brush stroke that I'm going to be doing here is really just kind of dashing it on the first layer of this yellow is still wet so it'll blend in there a little bit but if it doesn't that's okay too I'm not gonna get any extra water on my brush. I'm gonna use my brush just a little on the dry side here. So all of my brush strokes are either gonna go in the direction of the glass or mirroring the top surface of the water. So I'm not gonna do any angular or anything like that. It's gonna be that curved up and down shape or the curved left to right shape. And just short brush strokes as I'm doing. So I'm gonna start right up in here. And see how I'm just using very little pressure. I'm just kind of dashing at it. I 
I'm using super, super, super light pressure. And you can see how it's dragging a bit of that first color in. And that's good, that's what I want. And I'm gonna have it be lighter at the top and a little darker at the bottom. So now I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white and same brush stroke, just lightly dashing it. And again, it's kind of mixing with those other colors. Another little bit of white. See how I just kind of have a little blob on the end there? And right up in this corner is kind of where I feel like I want it to be the brightest. So I'm laying down almost pure white and then using that super light pressure to kind of dash it in. Maybe we'll give it a little bright spot down through here too. And then we can do the same type of thing up here on the surface, but I'm only picking up white. And just dashing it in along this one side. If that's too light, just kind of wipe that off and grab a little more of that yellow mixture and dash that back in. And a little bit, just a little bit darker on this other side. Doesn't matter which side you have the highlight and which side you have the low light on. And I'm gonna do that on all these. These ones that curve the other way, I'm gonna put the highlight on the opposite side, but put it wherever it feels like it should be to you. Just remember super light pressure. Pretend like you're dusting something that's very, very delicate. And if you put too much pressure on it, you might knock it over and break it. And this paint is a little dry, so I did pick up more of that yellow oxide, just so I can get that streaking effect. Little bit of white and let's get our highlight up in this corner. And we're gonna do the same thing on the bottle here. Now my bottle is pretty dry, so I'm probably gonna end up grabbing a bit of the yellow oxide as I work, just to keep kind of that streaky effect like I have in the other glasses. And again, all of my brush strokes are following the shape of the bottle or the shape of the surface. Keeping it pretty dark at the bottom here, mostly just using yellow oxide. There's a bit of the other colors on my brush, but I'm mostly just laying down yellow oxide here. Just get some more of that light color 
on my brush and a bit of white on the edge and we'll add the highlight. With that super light pressure again. I might take some of this light color and just add a few spots throughout, mostly like right here where the bottle is curved outward. I'll put a little bit of a highlight there. And just a bit of that yellow oxide to give it a blend. Let's add a few little bubbles into our champagne. So I'm gonna use the end of a small brush and I'm just gonna dip into some yellow oxide. Just get a bit on the end like that. And I'm gonna start down here toward the bottom and just kind of dot some of it on. Let it overlap. Don't try and make little polka dots that don't touch each other. Let it overlap a bit. I'm gonna kind of fill that bottom area and then bring some of it up. I'm not doing quite as many as I get up into here. And up on the surface here. Right around the edge. Maybe a couple in the middle. Just little dots. And then maybe we'll take a couple up. Eh, you can't really see those too well because of the background, but that's okay. I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna add a few throughout all of them. I'm not getting too crazy with these dots. I'm not going to do too terribly much in the bottle here, mostly just around the top. Now let's get a little bit of white and do the same thing. I'm not going to add quite as much white, just a bit here and there. These are just very simple little bubbles. And so what I'm doing here with the white really is swirling it in my paint and getting so I've got like a little point. Can you see that little point? And then that's really all I'm touching to the canvas is that little point. Just get some tiny little bright spots here and there. So anywhere where you feel like the gold bubbles were too much, just put a little bit more white over top of them. And I'm gonna take just a couple out like I did with the gold. 
And because it's white and we don't have any true white in the background, it'll show up a little bit better. And let's fill in our label. I'm just gonna use some of the same red I used in the background. Load up with that and fill it in. Pretty heavy. I am gonna add some white to it too. I don't think I'm gonna write anything on the label but use the label to you know, write something for yourself, maybe a New Year's resolution or you know, your name or your favorite brand of wine, champagne, whatever. Go ahead and write something fun on there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and just kind of give this a little bit of that kind of painterly look. And the white is going to help me cover the background a bit more. All right, let's go ahead and outline our glasses and we're about done. So I've cleaned off my angle brush and I'm going to load up with some black paint. And if you're not comfortable drawing lines with an angle brush, use whatever brush you are comfortable with. So I'm just going to use the edge. And remember that the long tip of the brush always drags. So if I'm going down, that tip is pointing up. So I'm not going to worry about these round parts just yet. I'll do that with a different brush. And I'm just going to bring that down the edge. And you can put as much pressure on there as you want. You can get some nice thick lines if you like. And down into the stem. And at the bottom all I'm going to do is that same type of line that I did with the chalk. Maybe I'll push a little harder in the middle and a little lighter pressure on the ends. So I'm going to go and outline all of these just like that. Keep a little extra water on your brush if you're having a hard time getting a crisp line. And notice I'm not worrying about my lines being thicker or thinner than each other. I want this to have a really fun, dynamic, graphic type look. So I'm just kind of letting my brush do however it's going to do. I'm going to go down to a smaller angle brush. This is about a quarter of an inch. And with this one, I'm going to outline the top edge of the glasses. And 
as well as the surface. Just doing kind of a thin line there. And I'm going to do that on all of these. My line got a little crazy there, but that's all right. Let's clean it up with a damp brush. All right, let's add a couple of little highlights here and there on the glasses and we're done. So I'm using my small angle brush and just white paint and just add a highlight wherever you wanna say that there's a little glow on the glass. And just like when we were painting in the champagne, you wanna make sure that your brush strokes either go with the top edge of the glass or with the side edge. So I'm just gonna add one kind of like right there down the edge here. Maybe a little one on the stem and on the base. And just kind of all over. Once it's completely dry, you can just take a damp brush and just lightly wipe away the chalk lines or the pencil lines. It should come right off, but I would wait to do this until it's perfectly dry. So maybe wait a couple hours. But see, just with a little bit of a damp brush, I can get those watercolor pencil marks and the chalk clean off and then sign up. And there's your fun festive painting to help you ring in the new year. As you can tell, when you do the splatter background, you need to make sure that you're in an area that you're okay with splattering paint everywhere. I don't know if you can tell actually, but my face, my hair, my arms, my shirt, things on the other side of the room, everything got splattered in paint. So just be aware of that when you do that part. 2016 was an awesome year for me and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being a part of that. I hope that I was able to bring you half as much joy as you brought me this year. And I'm really excited to see what we do together in 2017. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with a friend who you think would like it as well. If you'd like to continue painting with me today, check out these two videos that I've picked just for you. Also make sure that you sign up for my mailing list on my website so that you never miss an upload or an important update. Thank you as always for watching everyone. Happy New Year and I'll see you next time.